Okay, uh, we're going to show you how to install BPQ32. You need to go to the Groups I.O. page and sign in, or don't sign in if you want to sign up. Uh, for BPQ32, click the Download BPQ32 Installer right there. Click this uh, file here, which will be the latest complete installer. Download the file. Accept the risk, yeah, we know what it is. Alright, we're going to open the file. And we're going to install, hit next, next, next. It will install the uh, appropriate files in the correct uh, folders. Okay, if you want to read the documentation, you can click the check mark display BPQ documents now. We'll click finish. Now that we're done here, we can close both of those. And we'll go to uh, the do documentation page, which is John uh, Weissman's GA BPQ. Uh, if you click the download links and click the first one here, and go to the parent directory. You can get the BPQ config gin.zip file. Download that. When that's done, click on that. Open the config generator. Extract all, extract, you'll get this release window and run the config file and run. Now I already have an existing config file after the install so it should be there. Hit read, it's going to give you a warning, click OK. Now my stuff is already in there but this is my node call dash 5. This is the node alias FDK MD. Oh, the grid square hasn't showed up, so we'll have to put that in there. FM 19 GK. Uh, Sysop is me, not him. N3 HYM. Password. I'll leave blank for now. And you want to click Web Management Interface. And enable BBS, enable chat if you want the chat server, and if you want RMS access to the WinLink system, click enable RMS access and put your call dash 10 and your password in here. Uh, add a port, you should already have a telnet and an AXIP. So if you're going to add ports, you would click add port. The port number would be the next port number in line, and what is it going to be? Well, let's pick one. We have all kinds of options. Multi PSKs in here, huh? I didn't see you, FL Digi. Oh, yeah, there, there it is. There's FL Digi. Put in the host and the TC port number for FL Digi. Uh, if it's going to, if your port is going to be a VARA port, you can do that. It defaults to 8300. Uh, when you do this, VARA, it's just one for VARA. So you can do VARA HF or VARA FM, but then you would change the port number to match the VARA program itself, but they both cannot be the same port number or TC port number you have to change one of them save so now you'll see we'll have a vara a vara uh, port here and you can edit this and there's this there's a config for it and you
you would add the path in here to your either your FM or your HF uh, var that you're going to be using. And add an application. Let's see what that does. It doesn't do anything. Let's see here. Edit main config. Woo! No. Don't want to use that that way. Alright, when you're done, you will click Save Config File. But I'm not going to save it. I'll show you how I do it. We're going to close all this down. We'll come down here to Start, Programs, BPQ, and then View Configuration Folder. That's right here, and then it'll come up and you'll see BPQ32, and it's a CFG file, config file. Double click that, open that in Notepad, and you'll see my locator at the top that has map content, map comment for when your map displays on his node, on the BPQ node. The password, and this is your node call, node alias. And this is all the information you need to put in. ID message, a basic message. This is your beacon text. Here's an info message. Mine's quite lengthy. So users connect. They can see this information by typing H or I for info. Uh, a connect text. Here's a connect text that they get when they connect. The next one is network system parameters. I uh, didn't change anything but max nodes and max circuits. Enable BBS1, enable nodes 1, uh, hide nodes, I'll put 0 because I want to see all the nodes. Uh, enable linked A, control process of the link, linked command. A allows use by application, so whatever the, ap the application uses, that's what will come up. Or and then the next one is Ampernet. If you run an Ampernet, uh, you can set all that up here. Here's the ports list. The first one is the Telnet server. Uh, users can access port 2 is my XIP port, UDP information that uh, can be heard on, uh, through the router. You have to port forward these numbers on the router. Uh, if you're mapping with partners uh, through AXIP, you put their map address in here. Uh, my port 3 is a KISS and it runs a DRA50 sound modem by Master Communications. And this is how you set that port up. Address of the sound modem, uh, the PTT, and the path of UZ7HO sound modem. That's uh, the, the uh, directory for that. And this reports to WinLink what, what options I have. Packet 1200, VAR FM 1200. My port 4 is my VARA FM port. And it uses the same sound card, but it has a different port number you'll see here. This is 8300, this is 8150. And I have Flex Digi in here, but I'm having trouble getting that to work correctly. So that's one of the things I've been working with. And I have an uh, APRS uh, iGate set up here. This is the iGate setup with no, it's no radio, just an iGate setup. And down at the bottom of your config file, you put all your applications in. Your BBS is application 1, BBS, my call sign, my alias for the BBS, and 255 is the node, is the broadcast uh, quality that it would send out over the node. And then application 2 is my chat and that information. And then application 3 is RMS. And then the C1, where it says CMS, N3H1-10, HYM, RMS 255. So if someone were to type RMS, it would automatically connect out on port 1 to the CMS server. And in application 4, I also run the VE7CCC uh, DX uh, uh, spotting software. People can log in on Dash 4 to get that information. And I also run an application 5 which is MDC chat uh, Dash 7. We'll put them into the chat room for 
uh, the Maryland uh, DC Virginia chat room and then there's a talk application somebody logs in and types the word talk a window will pop up and show that uh, they want to talk to the sysop which would be me behind the command all right we'll close that window the next thing i'm going to show you is the sound modem now if you remember my sound modem setup i had 8150 but now i'm using this for my 9700 so my KISS server would be 8150 and then here on where it says COM10 I would be using an external PTT hit OK and then come back in and hit advanced PTT ops uh, advanced PTT settings and you should see your sound card show up in that and go to modems and make sure you have KISS turned on here, KISS optimization, and it's AX251200. Now for VARA FM. Go to settings, VARA setup. Uh, make sure this number matches what's in your config file 8300. Um, running narrow, six retries, your call sign, and if you have a registration key, put that in. And then sound card. This is actually the sound card of the 9700, but you would put in here the sound card of, if you were running, uh, you know, this is FM, of your DRA Masters Communications DRA 50. It usually shows up as UPN audio codec device. Uh, close that and your PTT for the uh, RA board you click RA right here and it, no RA not found because it's not hooked up and follow these instructions here on the speaker properties the level needs to be set at 100 and then the custom properties for a DRA 30 this AGC must not be checked I'll go back to cat cancel that and if you have a station close by, once you've got it all set up and you do auto tune, if there's a, an RMS station close by you can connect to, click this button, and it will transmit a signal out, and then this station will report back as to what your drive level, drive and receive levels are, and make sure the calibration is right for the VAR FM. 